nước ngoài xuất sắc giải thưởng cúp chiến thắng mã số 51 huấn luyện viên Park Hang Seo môn bóng đá nam mã số 52 ông Du Chí Quốc môn bóng bàn mã số 53 ông Kim Kim Tae môn tay quân đồ mã số 54 ông Matt Van Pel môn bóng rổ nam mã số 55 bà Siyana Bozilova môn thể dục aerobic mã số 56 ông Donnelly Joseph Ignatius môn rowing khán giả hãy truy cập website www.cupchiến.thắng.vn để bình chọn trò chuyên gia nước ngoài xuất sắc Me Hang Fung heard about talk sport again. So far in our talk shows, we've had so many different guests who work in different sports, but we actually never had a basketball coach in our show before. So it's such a big honor for us today to welcome our SEA Games silver medalist, a leader who is making an impact in Vietnam basketball. So please welcome to our show, Coach Eric Wesley. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. Oh, how are you doing today, Coach? I'm doing good. Excited to be here. I really mm -hmm. appreciate it. In our talk shows, we've had so many different guests who work in different sports, but we actually never had a basketball coach in our show before. So it's such a big honor for us today to welcome our SEA Games silver medalist, a leader who is making an impact in Vietnam basketball. So please welcome to our show, Coach Eric Wesley. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. Oh, how are you doing today, Coach? I'm doing good. Excited to be here. I really mm -hmm. appreciate it. Yeah, I've got like a few chances to see you on the courts like before, from Saigon to Hanoi. And you look most of the times really um, intense. High energy. Yeah, <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So first of all, can you share us about your like uh, journey uh, to become a coach so far? Like how long have you been working as a coach uh, professionally? So I started coaching professionally uh, in 2011. Mm. So it's been many years. Wow. Uh, I'm a young guy, but I have uh, a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. um, I Before I started coaching, I actually got to work with the San Antonio Spurs oh. as equipment manager. So I spent seven years with an NBA team, getting to learn from them. Oh, really? Um, be a sponge and absorb <laughs> all the mm -hmm. things I'm learning from them. And then finally got to apply it in 2011. And mm -hmm. here I am today, still coaching. So can you share us about, like, uh, what was the circumstance yeah. that got you to be the coach of Hanoi Buffalo? Uh, blessed opportunity. Um, you know, just having the chance to interview for Hanoi Buffaloes. Uh, mm -hmm. I was in Mexico. Mm -hmm. It was the beginning of COVID. Mm -hmm. and, oh, you so know, it was like about like two years ago? 2020. Right, yes. yeah. So it was the beginning of COVID, you know, and everybody was going through a very tough time. Mm -hmm. um, there's the challenges of having to get through something that we're not accustomed to, yes. which is dealing with mask on, stay at home. Um, you know, it was hard on everybody, but 
just getting that phone call and, and saying, hey, do you want to be a Hanoi Buffalo and lead our group? Mm. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, I'm a sure. big believer in that. Sure. Um, everything's a learning lesson. Mm. And so just the, the opportunity, I had to interview with another team, I won't say, but oh, um, really? before too as well. And um, Hanoi Buffaloes wanted me. The other team wanted <laughs> actually a good friend of mine, mm. Coach Ryan Marshawn. So we basically went to the two spots that we were supposed to go. Yeah, <laughs> you know, sure. It's a uh, destiny in this. <laughs> um, but I've been very blessed because the organization has been top notch. Mm. Uh, the organization uh, does everything in their power to make sure that the team is not only uh, successful, mm. uh, but is happy within, you know, what, um, you know, what is the environment that we create, the culture we create, yeah. Hanoi Buffalo culture. And so being able to come out here and help a group of guys get through mm -hmm. COVID and still at the same time love basketball yeah. and not lose their passion. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, it was just a blessing. And I said, you know it, I'm here. <laughs> it sounds like it did all come from the same root, yes. right? It's yes. like the passion yes. with basketball. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. sure. But so far, like, what are the difficulties that you have faced being a coach in Vietnam? Um, communication has always been the, yeah. the, the, the big one because, you know, I don't speak Vietnamese. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm one of the type of coaches that I, I speak a lot from the heart, yeah. oh. um, you know, and so I've, uh, I've, I'll go into a pregame speech yeah. and, and I won't necessarily have anything particularly planned. Mm. I just let it flow. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so whatever I'm feeling in the moment, after like kind of sensing the temperature of the room mm. you know, if the guys are a little down then i got to bring their heads up if mm -hmm. they're a little too excited i got to calm them down mm. find that middle ground balance so when i communicate with the guys um it's always been a challenge of trying to find that balance yes um and sometimes the emotional side uh and the and the ability to connect with somebody mm. I can't do easy because I can't express myself as a coach from what I'm feeling in my heart. Oh. I can say the words, but they yeah, don't sure. feel what I'm feeling. Sure. So it's uh, that's always been a, a tough challenge. But consistency and guys being around me um, through a good period of time mm. has helped a lot. Mm. You know, this is my third season with Hanoi Buffaloes. Uh, we had a very successful season this mm. year. And so once the guys kind of get to know my personality and mm. read my body language, start to understand the things that I, I you know, want for them in their yeah, careers, sure. um, then they start really being able to connect with my emotions. Mm. It just takes time, you know? Yeah, and so, sure. Uh, with time, but comes uh, comes progress. Especially uh, when it comes to good things. Yeah, good yeah, things exactly. So. <laughs> so now they, those guys, the guys know me so well now that, yeah. like I said, with time comes progress. Mm. And so. So, what are your impression about other teams in Vietnam in general so far? I actually love seeing the competitive side mm -hmm. to every team. Yes. Um, I've been able to go to high school games. I've mm -hmm. been able to go to youth leagues, mm -hmm. um, semi pro leagues. I've been able to see them, of course, be with the national <laughs> yeah. team. Every different. Uh, location of basketball that i've been a part of the one thing i've noticed is that people don't really they're not on their phones they're watching the oh, game yeah, they're sure. locked in I, when you know? i was in the course like that is the thing yeah. that i would be like so impressive about yeah. you know like well, when the, the crowds they cheers up everyone they're, yeah they're every yeah. play they're cheering every basket they're the cheering vibe. I really the vibe is it. amazing and so mm -hmm. that's that's a beautiful foundation because that's what stems from a country that just wants to mm. continue to develop you yes. know and, and and vietnam has taken a great step forward in mm. basketball in the last five six years yes um it's still very green mm. in a sense but really? the foundation is starting to really blossom yeah. you know so uh, there is like a question that i'm really curious about is that you know being a coach you yes. would be like uh, tough and strict right yes. but like so far have you have have you ever had any conflict with the players I mean, as a coach, you always you always have different little conflicts, and different situations. Mm. The beauty of Hanoi Buffaloes is I've got such a group of humble guys, Aww. humble guys that um, you know are willing to sacrifice their own personal goals at times mm. for the good of the group. Oh yeah, you know, and and it's not always easy. It's not always easy um, because you know we 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 set an idea of where we want to be in our own individual lives. And we have to make it work because when you win a championship, everyone succeeds. Oh, you know? yeah. Oh, yeah. When you make That's a finals, a common... everybody succeeds. Yes. You know? Com and so common goal. It, it, the common goals is, is, is key. And so, mm. me as a coach, I always try to sit down with the guys and try to say, okay, what are some goals that we want to set forth for, for, for ourselves? For this like, season. Oh, for yeah. ourselves and not for, for this season. For ourselves, for the group. Right. Yeah, for the group. Yeah. Let's set ourselves a bar of excellence high and push ourselves to that. And mm. I always talk about. Um, like the sport archery, mm. you know, when you shoot an arrow, bow and arrow, oh, you yeah? got to aim a little bit higher <laughs> than the goal yeah. to hit the bullseye. Yeah. And so I always said, okay, let's set some goals that's going to push us higher. If we 
for instance, this year, don't win the championship. Well, we were shooting for the championship. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Even though we hit a little lower than the championship, and we, we still made the finals. We still I mean, had success. Yeah, it's a part of the game. It's a part of the game. So um, for me, it's just key that, that, that part of being able to teach these guys uh, how to set those standards high. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and whatever happens afterwards, we're still successful because we did the right thing mm-hmm. and we did it together. Mm-hmm. So what is the future plan you have for the team? We're going to continue to work. Uh, that's mm-hmm. the first thing. You know, it's professional, so I have to really push these guys to be consistent. Mm. Um, but, I mean, we've been able to create those core values in yeah. them already. So just being uh, a good coach and being a support system for them yeah. every day as much as I can be. Mm. Um, you know, we're definitely going for that championship next season. Oh, um, yeah. You know, but hats off to Saigon Heat because they did an amazing job. Oh. You know, Coach Matt Van Pelt's the men's three-on-three coach yes. uh, for the national team. I'm the women's. <laughs> so it was already like a battle of brothers. Oh, yeah. You know, he's a great great friend of mine so hats off to Saigon Heat they did an amazing job mm. you know they're an example for Vietnamese basketball mm-hmm. um, but we're setting our foundation too mm. you know we have a lot of things that we want to get better at mm. um, continue to help these young guys develop more skills mm. um, continue to support the older guys yeah um, but I remember like you guys are having like a, a long break now yes right so what you and the team are doing right now so there's a lot of preparation for following season there can be oh. change of players there can be uh, mm. recruiting processes tryouts yeah. usually when Hanoi Buffaloes have our tryout mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there's like 300 to 400 kids Wow you know, that's um, a lot you know that's a big kids number. and young, young athletes you know they're not yeah. just kids but there's a lot of young athletes mm. too as well high school and college students mm-hmm. um, so we're definitely going to open our eyes to see what other talent is out mm-hmm. there. We have our Junior Buffaloes program that we can continue to develop mm-hmm. these young guys and uh, continue to work on their skill sets. Mm-hmm. Um, we're in the development process of having, of course, our Honolulu Buffalo Academy. Mm-hmm. You know, we have uh, a unison with HNBA, which is another academy too as well. So continue to like branch out to other organizations mm-hmm. and see how we as Hanoi Buffaloes continue to be a part of not just recruiting but development and oh, young yeah. athletes. Yeah. Um, that's our future. That's the mm-hmm. Buffalo future. So we have to support them now. Mm. Um, we have to give them the leadership and the teaching and the preparation mm. now so when they do get to an age that they can be a professional, yeah. they're mentally and physically ready. <laughs> you know, mm. So we're going to continue to work on, yeah, for sure. on all those things. moment uh yes i've had a few i've had some really good ones mm-hmm. um some of them aren't even like necessarily winning the game mm-hmm. it was the moments that we're in a group and we're playing you know uh pictionary or oh, we're yeah? playing charades in a group <laughs> um singing on the bus and doing karaoke oh. on the bus some of those oh, memories like are, a... have been fun yeah. yeah yeah it's not like all those activities like the burning activities yeah yeah we, yeah. we, we try our best in uh and we have coach Ving, who's been a, a, a great 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 coach for us that mm-hmm. really loves pushing that part of team unison yeah. uh team building activities yes so we try our best to do uh as much as we can as a team to mm. really kind of see ourselves outside of the basketball version mm. of us mm. but like just who we are as individuals so those are really fun um when it comes to competition mm. for sure that thailand and philippines games mm. that we had with the girls vietnam uh, the vietnamese national team mm-hmm. uh, with that wonderful group of golden girls the four girls that yeah. competed with me in three on three oh. um, which is the chung sisters the superstars oh, yeah, yeah. uh captain wang and, <laughs> and of course uh, ad and dao mm-hmm. um that was real memorable because mm-hmm. you know it's not every day that yeah, sure. team wins a silver medal. <laughs> I, yeah, I remember back in the day, like uh, all news, you know, like yeah. they all uh, had to the, the the twin sisters. Yes, right. Yes, yes. And like, how was that like um, moment when you got that chance to mm-hmm. to be really close to them? 
Um, really cool. Yeah. You know, um, we didn't get to spend a lot of time, you know, with, uh, you know, working together because it was such a quick process. Oh, yeah. Um, but we really got it to, to really gel and get mm -hmm. to know each other pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, they're some of the most humble, hardworking, and just mm -hmm. fun to be around girls, mm -hmm. all four of them. Mm -hmm. uh, they all have a little bit difference in the different things in their personalities. <laughs> um, but that's what made them so connected, you know, oh. and they were able to compete because they are. Oh, it's like are. yin and yang. Yeah, right. you know, very similar. Yeah. It's like, you know, four, four <laughs> leagues all connected differently. But, um, you know, it was so beautiful to watch them play. Mm. It was so beautiful to see them compete. Um, you know, every game that we had to go out and, and, and battle and fight, mm -hmm. you know, in three on three, mm -hmm. it's so few points and it's so few minutes that mm. anything can happen. Yeah, sure. You know, and so these girls were able to take adversity in moments where, you know, maybe they might have made a mistake or nothing. And then mm -hmm. they just turn it around and make a beautiful play. Oh, yeah. You know? Beautiful pair. Right. And so we, you know, going up and being able to go and beat Philippines, mm. uh, which was big, you know, then you all of a sudden go and beat Indonesia, mm. uh, which has never been done. Wow. And then, of course, the final game, you know, losing on a buzzer beater to Thailand, <laughs> you know, they made it's that okay. final shot. It's okay. Um, but being able to get to that very last five seconds of a gold medal game. And <laughs> wow. Know, it's close. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's still memorable because um, I'm, I'm a big believer that you don't always get in life what you want. You're mm -hmm. going to get what you need. Mm. Um, you know, we have all these big goals and big dreams, and mm. then sometimes reality of life doesn't allow us to reach, to have all those things. Mm -hmm. So maybe we wanted the gold. You know, <laughs> I know the girls wanted the gold. They were ready to go, and we're getting that gold for Vietnam. Yeah. Uh, one shot took it away from us, but we didn't get what we wanted, mm. but we got what we needed. Oh. We should still make history. First medal in SEA Games for women's basketball ever. Oh, yeah. Um, we won gold in ABL, which was in, in Bali, a great tournament. So we did get a gold <laughs> and our first international medal. Yeah. Um, and then just coming down and sitting in the locker room and telling these girls, look what y'all created. Wow. Look at the fans outside. Look at the 3,000 people that are sitting watching wow. on a TV outside wow. the arena because they couldn't get in. Yeah. You changed a lot of things. You changed everything for Vietnamese mm. women's basketball. Mm. Uh, from your commitment, from your hustle, and just being yourselves, yeah. not changing who uh, you are. Yeah, it sounds like uh, something it, something to be really proud of. Correct. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's you like know? a milestone in the uh, career. Yeah. You know, so, of course, they're crying and sad because they didn't win the gold medal. But, yeah. I mean, the reality is you didn't get what you want. You got what you needed. Yep. You know, what you needed was to give Vietnam a lighting, you know, uh, gasoline to the fire yeah, yeah. for what is the future of women's yeah, sure. basketball in Vietnam. Right, you want. Yeah. It's not really the thing that you need. Yes. Right. Yeah. And I think yeah, it's just and, meant to be like that. And I'm, I'm, you know, I've talked to the girls a little bit about this, to all four of them, that for them to maybe not win that gold medal mm. is giving them a beautiful gift. Mm. That they now have the push and the drive and the motivation to come back in future tournaments mm. and do it again. Are they coming back here again? We would hope. You know, we would hope. You know, they're, Did they they're, make like a yeah. promise? They're preparing for graduation, uh, oh. but their love and just the, the what the Vietnamese fans mm. and all the supporters and viewers did for them mm. was incredible because they realized that their their heritage, where they're from, where their parents are from, oh, yeah. um, the root. needs them. The root <laughs> needs them, you know? And so they're the foundation of Vietnamese basketball. Yeah. They're, the, they're the, the, the root of the tree, mm. but there's all these branches that start growing, mm. and they're helping yeah, grow them. those branches. Yeah. And that's fans, and that's media, and that's coaches, sure. and there's a lot of things that are happening and it stems from them just being themselves mm -hmm. and being well rooted into what they want for themselves. Yeah. So I know this is a <laughs> random tree analogy, but it's the it's the reality is that mm. um, now they have the future opportunity to come back with more motivation to go win that first yes. gold medal. Yeah, sure. You know, if they win everything. They show up and they just win everything and then go home <laughs> uh, back to Gonzaga. Then yeah, there'll they be nothing to tell, right? I mean, there's a lot to tell, but there's not enough to have that, like, second push, like, oh, yeah, you know, like, yeah, sure. you don't have that missing piece that right, you still Right, exactly. Want. So just imagine when you were in the peak, you yeah. wouldn't feel like you should try more because you were already, like, on the peak. Yeah. But, like, if you just, like, like for, like, a second, then yeah. you have a lot more to try. If you win everything, your motivation is not the same mm. as winning a lot and then still having that one thing that you really want. Mm. And so I know the girls, first thing they told me in the locker room, we run into your back, coach? You know, I'm like, <laughs> let's do it. You know, like they want to come back and compete and yeah. try to win that gold medal. Yeah. So they have a driving push and yeah. I'm happy for that. Aww. Everything happens for a reason. So, yeah, sure. Yeah. So what was the last thing the girls, the twins uh, spoke to you when they left? 
So uh, last thing they said in the locker room was, Coach, are we running it back? Which in, oh. in, in, the, in the States is a saying meaning that, like, we have unfinished business. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, Coach, are we coming for round two of the boxing yeah. match? You know, they like, will come back to yeah. get what they deserve. Correct, what they, correct, what, correct. What, like, what are supposed to be theirs. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> And I love that competitive fire wow. from them. Um, so that was the last thing they said to me in the locker room, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and then going into the five on five, like mm -hmm. we have a great group of girls. Um, the men's team are also awesome too. Yeah. Um, but like me and my experience with the girls, I mean, all 15 of those girls are awesome. Mm -hmm. So we competed in the five on five, uh, came this short to winning mm -hmm. bronze medal with the five on five, but mm -hmm. all those girls are amazing. And yeah. so, I mean, Really, the last thing they say is, love you, coach. See you soon. Peace. <laughs> you know, you know they, they have their style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See you soon, coach. Oh, Please. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. That was like their signature. Yeah, there you go. Oh, so. shout out to the twin. Uh, to the twin. I really yeah, love that. Yeah. Girls, I really love that. Peace out, coach. <laughs> you know, like, they, 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 they're super hip. They're super hip. Yeah. And then it rubs off on the rest of the girls. Mm -hmm. And the girls mm -hmm. are all the other girls are cool. awesome. But um, there's got, a bright future. There's yeah, a bright they future. got a lot of, like, uh, contagious energy, right? Yeah. yeah. And they're mm -hmm. so chill about it. It's not like they're, like, crazy wild <laughs> energy. They show it on the court. Yeah. And then off the court, they're in their Crocs, just chill and <laughs> chill and chill. It's just their personality. But um, but I love that because mm -hmm. that's the foundation to, you know, the future of Vietnamese mm. basketball. Yeah. And there's sure. going to be a lot of great female basketball players that are going to come out mm -hmm. um, from this mm. and say, I can do this too. drums when I was in middle school um, you know 12 13 years old you know at that time I was trying different sports I played American football soccer tennis of course basketball and then you know I still wanted to have another creative side so I said you know let's try drums and I loved it I fell in love with what a beat exemplifies you know having a beat like your heartbeat boom 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 it stays consistent and I just fell in love with that part of being a part of a group a band and being the heartbeat of the band. Uh, first, you gotta follow your beat. <laughs> that's the that's the that's the first thing. Cause being a drummer, you have to be able to focus on maintaining that rhythm. When you're in a band whether it be a uh, marching band or orchestra band, um, you have all these different instruments playing and you have to be in beat with them. So that was the challenge of the teamwork that it took to be able to be in tune with the people next to me. Let's keep it, let's keep it, all right? Together, together, I'm here, I'm here. Everybody play together, okay? Is like an orchestra you have defenders and you have guys that shoot you got guys to play physical low post you have all these different instruments within a basketball team and you have to make them all play together if one guy on the court moves late it messes the whole play up it's the same as an orchestra or a band you have to have everybody in the same beat and if the saxophone makes a at the wrong time then it makes the whole thing sound bad so it's the same principles of teamwork and being in tune. I just try to, like I said, before you can learn to lead, you have to learn to listen. Listening is auditory and sometimes listening is reading, listening to the message in my head and assimilating how I can apply it in my life and in my players' lives because I try to learn from other people. I never want to consider myself the best at what I do. I strive to be the best coach I can be. But in order for me to do that, I have to learn from other people's experiences and see how I can apply them in my life. So reading gives me that tool to be able to do that. So I usually try to spend at least 20 minutes a day reading, at least, minimum. Um, a lot of the time during the season, uh, sometimes the players will see it, sometimes I do it, sometimes I won't, would be on our, when we're driving to the game, and I'll read. I'll just sit there and I'll try to get some information that 
Maybe it just fits well with our pregame speech. I'll read something and say, hey, I can use this in my pregame talk with the guys because it translates to maybe a certain emotion that we need to feel or a certain type of focus or mental, uh, mental nutrition that the guys need to go out and compete. So it can be anywhere from self-help books. It can be anywhere from motivational books. I do a lot of leadership and coaching books because I try to learn from other coaches. I'll take things that I read or quotes that I like. I have a book that I just write every single quote that I like and I just collect them all and I collect them and I'll have 50, 60 pages worth of quotes. And if I'm having a, a, a day that I'm frustrated or I'm having one of those down days that we all have with human beings, I'll go to my book and I'll find that quote that fits that moment to get me out of that moment of anxiety or depression or stress or frustration. Anything negative, that quote might help me get out. So I write down quotes a lot. When it comes to my own writing, I'm writing two books, um, one more for athletes and one, uh, you know, for common everyday individuals. And, and it's funny because one of the books, I don't have an ending to it because it's related to my career and what I'm trying to accomplish. And I think that once I accomplish that big goal that I have set forth, then I'll be able to close the book. I'm in this journey, this coaching journey, um, being in different countries, having to work with people who speak different languages, having to adapt to different cultures and different uh, ways of living. So it's neat because I think our, style, our lives become one big story. Um, you know, any kind of book that I might publish later on is gonna be you know, intuitive and helpful for people, especially athletes and coaches. Um, but what we really are is just writing down one big story. So let's talk a bit more about your personal life. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, because like uh, usually, you know, when it comes to the wind, then everyone will be like yeah. cheerful and like uh, going out to like celebrate. Yes. But what about when you lose? You and the team lose. What will you do? So you, you can ask my coaches. I have this really, <laughs> you know, weird habit. I always do it, but what's that? I can't sleep until I watch every game and every play. Really? After a game. So oh. I mean, whether we win or we lose, mm. as soon as the game's over. I'm in my room, yeah. I'm sitting out, and I'm studying every play. What happened? Wow. Taking notes, figuring out, and that process usually oh, yeah. takes, you know, a couple hours um, because it's fresh in my mind. Mm. You know, sometimes situations happen in the game, like, oh, my God, what was that? What <laughs> happened? It passed so fast, I didn't even see it. Oh, yeah. And then oh, I'm watching the film, like, and, I'm like, and I'm sitting here like, did I make the right decision? Did I not? No. Did I put these guys so in successful position? So it's a bit too position? tough for yourself? Right, right, exactly. Yeah. You kind of uh, auto-critique yourself, mm. you know, and, like, as a coach, it's really difficult because we don't shoot the shots. Oh, yeah. You know, it's not like we can go out there and make a shot and make our team <laughs> win. We have no control or power in that yes, situation. Sure. So we have to do everything that we can to put these guys in a position tactically, strategically, mm. and emotionally mm -hmm. to win. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and sometimes our decisions can change in, in a heartbeat. Mm. You know, we have this big plan to beat this team a certain way, and then they change on us, and then all of a sudden it becomes a chess game. Oh, yeah. Again, using oh, other yeah, sports. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, me and Coach Van Pelt, this last finals, it was a chess game, you know. <laughs> uh, I've had chess games with all coaches. And mm. so, you, you know, we really just try to find a way to put them in positions to be yeah, successful. Sure. Um, and it's not easy. It's hard. I it's know. Hard. Yeah, it's a long process to yeah. arrange uh, everything as well. Yeah. Yep. So besides the uh, profession aspect, mm -hmm. what else would you teach them? You kind of just teach them about, like, uh, basketball itself, right? Mm -hmm. It would be, like... I actually learn a lot from them first Aww. because, you know, I'm, I'm still a foreigner here. Mm. You know, I, I adapt really well and yeah. I become friends with it's everybody good. and I'm it's super good. easygoing and, and everything. But I'm still learning a lot, mm. you know, whether it be the customs, the traditions, from tet, from foods, mm -hmm. all kinds of things. So I try to learn things from them. And then when I have an opportunity to share or do something new and different, mm -hmm. um, I pray and hope it's something that they can connect with. Oh. So I try to study a little bit on different like um, ways of teaching, oh. um, different ways of training, and use different analogies or different you talk um, about, like, materials. You know. Yeah, you talk about like the certain uh, curriculum. Yeah, different curriculums, oh. different different materials yeah. to try to teach a lesson. You know, mm. so I'll use different things. I mean, you can use volleyball for example. You know, setting up the pass to make the spike. Really? Well, I mean, yeah, actually, basketball, link like different sports. Yeah, into in basketball, one. it's Jeff Stubbs throwing the alley oop <laughs> to Shane Henry for the dunk. You know, it's yeah. similar principles mm. in sport, and so I'll use different sports as a way of teaching and just mm. to change up the energy. Yeah. Um, 
And like I said, everything is the tool that we can try to find a way as a coach to use. Mm -hmm. And just try it. <laughs> you know, just yeah, try sure. it. If it works, it works. If it sure. doesn't, at least you tried. Yeah, new experience. Yeah, if yeah. you like new lessons. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. sure. So nowadays, a lot of young people, they want to be like a, a basketball player. So do you have any like um, standard to recruit a new player? I've actually, I love how you, you say that they mm. want to be a basketball player because yeah. basketball is hot in Vietnam right exactly. now. Exactly. BBA like, is like a, a really um, like a trendy thing. It, it is. <laughs> and especially you know, the C games right. and the men's and women's teams that I got to be a part of. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's hot because there's a lot of fire towards getting through COVID and getting back out and, and enjoying the presence of being around mm. people who love basketball too. Yeah. Um, and I see these mega crowds <laughs> and I'm looking around, I'm sitting here like, there's a lot of talent out here. Uh, oh, Vietnam yeah? has a lot of a lot of young talent. Mm. Um, the challenge for us is for them to understand that this <laughs> Hanoi Buffaloes and national team, it's a job. It's not just for fun, you know, it's a job. Yes. Um, but I really look for young athletes that are not only available, that mm. make time to, mm. to, to, to put an effort into becoming a better basketball player, mm. um, that are consistent, that mm. are determined, that are, you know, have, a, a, you know, a foundation of discipline because mm. a lot of young athletes they don't know how to be disciplined so we can train oh, them yeah, but the sure. ones that already kind of have it they're already one step forward yeah, and sure. ahead of the others and so i really recruit people that have already a level of respect and discipline towards mm. Hanoi Buffaloes mm. towards me and towards their teammates. Mm. But do you plan to stay in Vietnam for long? I hope so. Yeah, I hope mm -hmm. so. You know, and uh, you know, I continue to travel. And like I said, we we have our long term plan. My long term plan, of course, mm -hmm. is you know, and everybody kind of knows I'm really shooting to try to make the big leagues mm -hmm. uh, as a coach. Um, you know, one day hopefully I am in the NBA. You know, working oh, yeah. as on a team. Um, that's my big big goal. But oh, really? Mm -hmm. So like being a part of the NBA or which? Till that like a point in your ultimate goal in basketball. That's the goal. Yeah, that's the goal ah. for sure. That's the goal for sure. So not just like stabilize everything in Vietnam, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, that's the that's the ultimate goal. And um, you know, me being Latino, there's 